Okay, aloha and welcome. Thank you for being here. I have a special guest today and I'm Janet Johnston and I am here to help you design and create a life that gets you excited and you know gets you up and um, something to look forward to every morning. And so today I have a special guest and she is hailing all the way from Colorado, right? And her name is Andrea Paulton. And um, aloha, Andrea. Thank you for being here. Aloha, Jan. And I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. And I'm grateful that, you know, you could have a virtual Hawaii visit. Yes. <laughs> and I can I have a virtual Hawaii. Colorado visit. <laughs> I know. I miss Hawaii. I have my heart is in Hawaii. I have a timeshare there. So we go to um, Kona a lot. Oh, okay. That's awesome. So you've experienced the beauty of Hawaii then? Yes. The people, the island, the whole chill vibe that I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are a chill people. <laughs> it's, it's so good. I feel like when we get off the plane, just when that door opens and you get that warm air and you see the hut airport, it's an outdoor airport for those of you guys that haven't been, it's like the weight of the world is just gone. Like the second we step off, we just look at each other, my husband and I, and we're like, oh, we're Whoa. home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you ever been to Honolulu? Because that's the island I live on is Oahu. No, I've only been to Kauai and um, the big island. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, one day you need to come to Oahu. <laughs> yes. And then we can do this in person. Yeah, exactly. That would be so much fun. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So you know what I'm going to do before we get started is I'm going to read your bio before you share your um, journey with us. Okay. okay. So here we go. So Andrea Paulton is a business coach and lead generation expert. She helps coaches, consultants, and service-based entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, excuse me, build a deep connection with their ideal clients through heart-centered marketing and powerful lead generation so they can get the income they deserve. After 20 years in corporate America as a marketing executive and three-time business owner, Andrea learned what it takes to grow a successful business. Now she's dedicated to helping entrepreneurs make an impact for their clients and on their business. That's awesome. And that's exactly what I want you to share is the impact that you're making and your deep why for what you're doing. Yeah. And so I would love it if you could share with everyone like your journey, take us way back as far as you need to, like even from when you were a child, some people knew some people that I've interviewed knew from when they were like really little, you know, what they liked and the journey that they, um, that they wanted to take. So, you know what, you just go for it and share what you feel we um, need to hear. I love it. I'm going to take you back all the way to when I was 12 years old, but That's I do cool. want to preface that by saying that I'm a late bloomer. I didn't realize about my entrepreneurship and love and wanting to have my own business until later. So for those of you guys that are maybe now starting to think about it in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and even mm -hmm. 60s, it's never too late. So that's my story. And I'm sticking <laughs> to it. That's good. I agree. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened. So rewind the time. I'm standing in the middle of the school ground and I have all these kids pointing at me, laughing at me. I am brand new, first day of school. I moved from a small town in Germany to a big old Los Angeles, California. Oh man. And I was wearing full neon. I was wearing pink neon shore shorts and a green neon shirt in germany it was totally in style i i didn't know it was not in style in la so the kids were pointing and laughing at me and that was not the impression i wanted to make and so immediately i came into this 
country in the first day of school and just was defeated. And I was like, oh, what the heck do I do now? I'm not going to make any friends after this. So what I started doing was I started looking around and figuring out what is in style in America, what people are wearing. And I started buying that kind of those kinds of clothes, which were I love it. I love shopping. I love clothes. So there's nothing wrong with me wanting to shop new stuff. And so in a way, I was starting to learn my target audience. I was starting to learn what was in and what who I was trying to attract mm -hmm. and who I was trying to, you know, be friends with. And so I started changing my offer the offer of the way I dressed and everything. And, you know, I still had an accent and that accent really never went away. It's, it's still there a little bit. Um, but I started changing and looking at my target audience, looking at the offer. And then I started thinking about, you know, well, I'm not going to change who I am as a person because I love who I am as a person, but I'm still going to try to fit in. I'm in a new country, but I'm going to do it my way. So I had two different colored Converse shoes. I still had a little bit of neon. I just didn't have a whole outfit. And I, <laughs> and I came and presented myself as me. And what happened was because I realized my target audience, I changed my offer and I still showed up as me, as authentically me, I made friends and I was invited to parties and I nailed it and I fit in. And I was still me though. I never gave that away. And that is something without knowing when I was young, I was already marketing because my target audience, that's a marketing thing. Figuring out my offer, that's a marketing thing. How to stand out, that's a marketing thing. So I was doing marketing at 12 without even knowing it. Okay, that's really cool. But let me ask you a question. Where do you think that strength came from? Like you knew like, okay, they weren't going to defeat me. And that's not normal for a 12 year old, especially a girl. Like, where do you think that strength came from? Was it from your parents, the things that they've said to you? Like, what do you think that was just to get a little insight on that strength you had? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Um, it's, it goes really deep in psychology here. Um, when my parents and my brother and I, we were in Germany. Uh, my brother had a lot of issues. He had a lot of problems. There's like health issues and all kinds of stuff. So I learned early on to stand on my own two feet. And my parents, they spent more time with him because he mm -hmm. needed that attention. And they were like, yeah, Andrea's fine. Andrea can do her own thing. Andrea is strong. And I always, in a way, was, my mom said. But I also was almost forced a little bit to be stronger because I was a little bit more on my own because the, all the attention was on my brother and the things that he was, he was going through. That and so sense. I think, yeah. So I think, I, I do think I was born with a little bit strength because my mom said like, <laughs> I was just like that from the beginning, but it did, it, it did happen immediately because my brother was five years older. And um, by the time that I was born, he already had some, some experiences that my parents had to pay a lot of attention to him. And so that was kind of a nurture and nature, right? I was born yeah. a little bit like that, but I also was nurtured into being strong. And then moving from um, Germany to America, the first three months, I didn't have school yet. So we were at home. And my dad was at work all day long from nine to five. Yeah. I was alone at home with my mom and my brother. And so when we went to the supermarket to buy food, my mom couldn't speak any English. So being the youngest, I learned English really fast. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're little, you learn that stuff fast. Mm -hmm. And I was translating. So I was translating with a lawyer. I was translating at the supermarket. I was, I was carrying the family in a lot of the language barrier. So again, as yeah. a little child, it was put on me again to be mm -hmm. strong and to lead. And so it was, you know, one thing every everywhere I moved to, it was always like, oh, Andrea can do this. Andrea knows how to do this. Andrea will figure <laughs> it out. And so it made me strong um, and made me equipped to get in a situation where it was really hard. I mean, I was bullied and, you know, it, it mm. wasn't horrible bullying like you hear about, but it was enough where people were like, you know, like people threw stuff at me. I mean, I was walking down the hall. It was crazy. 
but I was wow. able to just go through it because of the nurture and the nurture, the nature and the nurture. Yeah. Well, that's great though, that I guess because you were bullied like that, you were given that strength and, you know, as a child. So, wow, that's yeah. interesting. That's really fascinating how each individual person um, has their own experiences that shape who they are. Yes. Wow. Thank you and, for that. And even, you know, from the, I know we're not talking about psychology, but from that angle, you know, the way my brother is now as an adult and the way I am in as an adult, we're so different because yeah. we had, we lived in the same family. Yeah. But we had <laughs> such a different experience. Mm -hmm. It's, there's, we have nothing in common. Like we have, literally not it's the, it's the craziest thing when you look at us everyone's like how are you related and i'm like i don't know you just are. i say the same thing about my siblings so <laughs> yeah and so um so that's the that's the marketing part and also the leadership part right because like you you pointed out you know i had that strength and so what happened was um, years later, I um, didn't know what I wanted to do when I grow up. And so I'm like, oh, I want to be on TV. <laughs> so I looked at journalism and I started studying journalism and I really was like, eh, I don't really like it. And so what happened was I worked for CNN and I worked for the Columbine shooting in Colorado. That was one of the first big, big, horrible school shootings. Mm -hmm. And I had to interview um, the, the deceased of uh, the, the uncle of one of the deceased, Lauren um, was her name. And I had to interview him and he cried. And I had, it was a pre-interview before they actually came on. And um, I was like, oh, okay, well, I know what's going to make him cry. And I was told to ask that question, what makes him cry? So I did on live television and he kind of like crumbled and I, I went forward and I gave him a hug. And I remember to this day, the producer, she yelled at me for hugging him and um, and helping him out because it would have been such good TV if he was on the floor crying. And so I was like, you know what? I can't do journalism. I am mm -hmm. a very nurturing person. I like to help people. Mm -hmm. I can't stick a microphone in your face and say, how do you feel that your niece has died? I, yeah. It just wasn't me. And yeah. so I struggled. I was like, what do I do? And so I ended up taking this horrible job at, at a radio station where I was um, doing the like the soundboard in the middle of the night. It was awful. <laughs> and the company next door, it was one of the first internet radio station. It was called Go Gaga. And the CEO and I would talk in the kitchen. We had a shared kitchen. And I told him, I'm miserable. I hate this. Like, I don't know what else I can do. And he totally took a chance on me. And he'll be forever in my mind. His name is yeah. Joe Pizzolo. And he said, Andrea, come to me and I'll we'll do marketing. We'll figure it out. So I started working with Go Gaga and I was their marketing coordinator. And literally at that time, I put stickers on people's cars and I would like write to people online. Like that, <laughs> that was my marketing. And, and I loved it. I absolutely fell in love with it. And um, I ended up staying in marketing and worked my way up from a marketing coordinator all the way up to a, the head of marketing. So a marketing executive. And it took me about 18 years to get to this huge, humongous goal that I've always set for myself. I was making bank. I was making good money. <laughs> I had a good title and I was not happy. Mm. I just wasn't happy. And so what I did is quit this job, went to that job, quit that job, went to this job, quit this job, went to that job. I was job hopping. I mean, I was literally at companies for six months. And after a while, it took me a while, I realized it's me. It's not the companies. It's me. <laughs> I'm not happy doing this. So while this was going on, I was like, what else can I do? And I like to serve. I like to help people. And one of the schools is called General Assembly. Um, they are an online school, but also in cities. They, um, they, they wanted a digital marketing instructor. So I was like, oh. That's me. I can what totally city were you in at the time? Pardon me? What city were you in at the time? That was in Denver, Colorado. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so um, so I was like, that I can do that. So I started doing it and I absolutely fell in love with teaching. I loved 
helping, explaining, and I'm super nerdy and excited about marketing. <laughs> so the students really liked me too, because they were like, oh, this is fun. I can actually learn from her. And you know, she's totally into this. And um, so I was like, this is cool. I like this. But Janet, I was still not emotionally prepared to seek this further. I, I, I don't know why. It just, in my mind, you make money by working nine to five at a company. That that was in my mind. That was that's it. And then well, that was pretty common for what most people grew up with, you know, 20 plus years prior to that. Totally, yeah. totally. And so the the teaching I just did on the side. Then the next big thing happened. I um I received a phone call. It was about eight o'clock in the evening, and my mom said, Your dad's in the hospital. Um, and I'm he's fine, but I just want you to know we're here. And something inside me said, you know what? I got to go. I got to go. I got to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it was a two hour drive. And so I just told my husband, I'm like, you know what? She says he's fine. I'm just going to go over there. I just want to, I just want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got there and he was still fine. He was fine. And 10, 15 minutes later, after I got there, the machines came on, the lights came on, and he started having heart failure. And he died in the room right in front of my brother and I, and they tried to revive him. They moved him to another room. In that other room, I don't know why, I, I went with him. I don't know why they let me in, but they did. I was with him, he died again, so they had to revive him again. And then he ended up having surgery and he died that night. Oh and it God. was such a huge, shock because mm -hmm. we didn't know i mean he wasn't sick he wasn't supposed to die i mean it wasn't his time yeah. right and and when we went to the hospital we were still joking with him when we got there because he got submitted for dehydration and it's something that was really funny to us at the time um so what happened was i had this huge shock and i was said i'm gonna go leave where I'm, where I'm at living in Denver, I'm going to move to Colorado Springs to help out my mom. So my husband and I moved over here. I was commuting to my job, which was two and a half hour drive. And I was commuting to the school, which was about an hour and a half drive to teach. And Janin, that time was the, was the worst time of my life. I had panic attacks the entire time I was driving the two hours. I was crying because I was working, working, working. And then all my emotions were in that two hour car ride alone. I started having panic mm -hmm. attacks. It was awful. So I went to a life coach and well, first I went to psychologists and, and all that didn't work. I went to a life coach and I fell in love with coaching and she was just the most amazing life coach. Um, her company is called fruition coaching. And so I thought I should be a life coach. Mm -hmm. And I started studying coaching. Dan and I'm not good at coaching. I'm <laughs> way too opinionated. I had a, a woman that was telling me about her boyfriend, and I'm like, leave his his a. I, I don't know if I can cuss here, but I'm like, you gotta leave him. It leave was. Him. I'm not a good coach. And <laughs> so then I was like, okay, what do I do now? So okay, I'll do career coaching because I know how to get careers. I've been job hopping my whole life. I know how to coach. I didn't like that either. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh my gosh, I, I just don't even know. So at the time I was in my job, in my marketing job, I was doing all that driving. I did the coaching certificate. I had the panic attacks and like nothing. It was just like all mumble jumble. And one day um, I was sitting on a call with um, somebody at my company and it just didn't go really well in my gut. It felt wrong. And I said, I quit. And on the call, I'm like, I just, I just, out of the blue, I just, I didn't talk to my husband about it. I didn't plan it. Nothing. I quit. Uh -huh. So I quit. And then I was like, well, the only thing I can do is career coaching. Cause that's what I had set up. Cause that's what I did. And so I tried that for two months and I was like, I don't like it. And what was happening is all my marketing industry, all my friends and all my network they started coming to me for marketing advice. And they're like, Andrea, help me with this. Help me with that. And it was so overwhelming how many people were coming to me with marketing advice. And I'm like, ding, huh. ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. I should be a marketing coach. So that was how I became a marketing coach. And I started my company. I, 
the, the title, it, titles don't matter, but I am a business coach because I do a little bit more than marketing. I do accountability and that type of stuff too, but I do do marketing training. So I'm sticking with my passion, with what I'm good at, with what I've done for 20 years. And yeah. I'm taking in a little bit of that coaching that I learned on how to help people through some of its mindset and some of it is just which tactics you need to grow your business. And that's how I got here. A bit, not a straight path. Yeah. Well, you know, most journeys are not straight anyway, right? You always have the twists and the turns and the and the tragedies and wow. That's really fascinating though. So, like what gets you excited? I talk a lot about like what gets you excited when you wake up in the morning. When I when I do my videos, I always try to encourage women to like find something that will get them excited when they wake up in the morning. And it always connects to like your why for who you are, for, you know, why you're living and, you know, on and on, but share with us like your why, like why you get up, what gets you excited? Yeah. So I have two whys. Um, one of them is a selfish me why, and it's totally cool to have that. And one of them is an other why. The selfish me why is I love the freedom because remember I was telling you, it was like job hopping and I thought maybe I didn't like marketing, but it had nothing to do with that. I was done reporting into people. I was done making another company richer and I just wanted the freedom. Um, we go to Hawaii a lot. We travel a lot. I'm from Germany. So um, once we can travel again, you know, I want to go back to Europe and that is just only able I'm only able to do that if I have that freedom and entrepreneurship gives me that freedom. So that's my first why. And that and the, with that freedom also means I get to stay at home with my husband and my dogs. My husband works from home. My dogs are like my kids. So I get to stay home with them. So that's my 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 personal why. I don't and think my, that's selfish at all, actually. And we could talk about that after, but go ahead and talk wow. about your next why. Yeah. And then the other why is that when I was doing the teaching, that's when I was like, oh, wait a minute. I love helping other people. I love seeing other people grow. I um, I, I just really enjoy telling people about marketing because I'm passionate about it and then telling them how to do it. And then I love seeing them implement it. And then, then all of a sudden their business grows and they explode or they come back to me and they're like, Oh my God, I got a hundred new leads in one week because of what you taught. And it just makes me feel proud of me, makes me feel proud of them. And I feel like I did something because, you know, a lot of these coaches, um, they, they do such great things. They're health coaches, nutrition coaches, you know, and they, they, they just really give back to society. And I'm like, yeah, I just teach marketing, but I chose to teach marketing to coaches and consultants so they give back. So the more I can help them grow their business, the more people that they can help, which is my whole goal is to serve and help people that need life coaching, health coaching, and that type of thing. That is so powerful. All that you just said about your two whys is really powerful. And so I kind of want to talk about that for a little bit just kind of unpack it so the first why you said was selfish now my personal view is that that's not selfish because that is part of the reason why you get excited to wake up in the morning and to do what you're doing right is because you have that freedom and you know everyone is so different not everyone likes to have a job you know some people do and that's fine because we're different, but I love how you articulated really well, like your why for, you know, you consider it selfish and personal, but I want all the women listening to know that that is a strong um, why that you need to have. It's like, what is it going to do for me? Because we have to live a life that feels good instead of going through like the daily grind that I talk about, you know, you wake up, you go to work, you come home, do the same thing, wake up, go to work, come home. And, and there's no joy and life in that for a lot of women who feel like, okay, you know, they're really hating it. So I love that you could articulate that, you know, you know what you want. It gives you the freedom and you can be with your husband and your dogs and, 
and all of that. And even like your second why, I love that because you are doing something to help so many other women out there. So it's like your two whys are, are just working as one if you kind of look at it that way. It's really not separate, but when you talk about it, you know, it could seem like it, but they all work together. And I absolutely love that. And I want every woman watching this to know that that everything is connected. Our business and our, our personal life are connected. You know, it's not separate, even though I hear people saying that it is, it's not, you know, when you're, when you're in your personal life, you're always thinking about your business. And when you're doing, working on your business things, you're always thinking about your personal life. So it's one, right? Cause it creates the life that you want. Yes. So, and it's, Especially if you are a coach or you are a consultant and you are the brand of your business, you are the face of it. If you're not happy, you're not going to show up the right way. Exactly. You know, like, like even this morning, I was kind of dragging a little bit and I was like, ah, and then I just did some morning routine, got myself in the groove and just not just snapped out of it. And I show up better. And if I came dragging on this call and, you know, Janet wouldn't want me on. <laughs> and, and we have to have a dance party first. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's why it's so important. If you are doing what you love, it is apparent. People will see. And people always laugh at me. They're like, oh, my God, why do you like marketing so much? I just love it. It's fun. And that comes through. And that makes me a better teacher. And I serve better because of it. So having that why and that and I like that you said it's not selfish because you're right. It's it's my personal why versus my people why not. It's not selfish. You're right. I, I really love that you said that. Yeah, because it gets you up and it gets you helping other other women. And I always talk about how your dreams usually are here to bless you and other people. You know, it's always a win win situation. And and I love that you're talking about that. And you know what I want do you to share? Do you have like a success story that just moved you? And that just, and that gave you like, um, what is that feeling? Like what you're doing is right. Like, you yeah. know, you're on the right path, you know, when you had this um, success story with a client. Yeah, I have, um, I have, I have a few, one of them that sticks out right now. And, and I think it's just cause I talked to her a couple of minutes ago before we got on. Um, her name is Amy and Amy, um, came to me the first time when I was teaching for general assembly. So this was my, one of my very first students and I taught her marketing on how to be a marketer for corporate America. Wow. Then I changed and I became a business coach and I had my own company and she came back to me and she said, I think I want my own company. I think I want to be a social media manager. So she ended up taking one of my classes from my business and um, ended up really just doing it. And she said, you know what? I'm not going to look for a job. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a consultant. I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and do this on my own. And she now has a successful social media management company where she has taught, um, or she has um, done management, social media management for companies like adventure companies and coffee company, like really cool, um, cool experiences, which is very much her personality. She's not a nine to five corporate drone. It's just not her. So I was so glad that I was able to kind of push her along, help her out and be a guide to her. You know, I did it first and then she did it. And now she's living the life that she's been wanting to live. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. was she um, was she at first hesitant to start her own business or was she like when she remembered you and she she was ready? You know, some people feel like they need, um, you know, like that push and they're not sure. Or some women, they just know like, OK, now it's time. I'm ready. When she first the second time she came to me, she was not ready yet. She was still going to look for a job. She was like, I'm going to just work nine to five. And yeah. And then over the time of us together, all of a sudden she's like, no, I, I got to do this on my own. I got to have my own company and I got to make this happen. That's good that you were able to kind of hold her hand. And you know what? We have two people watching that are saying, 
Hello, we have a Callum Trigg said hello. We have a Christopher Tucker. He sa he says, hiya, ladies. <laughs> hiya. Hiya. <laughs> hello. Thank you for watching. Yeah, let um, us know if you have questions, too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this is so interesting that um, you get to help women. Now, your business, do you just help women only or do no. you work with men as well? I work with men as well. Um, yeah, I got a dude and a dudette um, equal. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a lot of men recently that have been signing up. Um, so the only thing that they all have in common is obviously they all want to learn marketing, um, but they are, um, most of them are in a service-based, all of them are in a service-based industry where um, the financial advisors, um, I got a music coach, super cool guy, Tony Risotto. If you ever want to learn the guitar, he's the guy to go to. Um, he works at Fretscapes. That's the name of his company. Um, so it's very cool. You have these people that are like financial advisors and coaches that are very analytical. And then you have people like Tony who's super creative. And so it's really cool to teach marketing to both types mm -hmm. of brain people, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, I love the men. I love the girls. Come on in. If I can help you, I'm there to help you. <laughs> I love that because you have, it sounds like you have a variety of, of clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, and I actually, um, one of my clients, um, we're, um, she's a, oh, I don't know her title. I think it's intimacy coach, but she's basically a sex therapist. So, so, so it's really cool to see all these different people and it's funny, you know, it's like you have all these different people, but it, the marketing is very, very similar. Just the copy and the text and the visuals are different, but the actual channels and the tactics, they're the same. They're the same. It doesn't matter if you're selling Pepsi or if you're a sex therapist, it's still a <laughs> lot of it is like the same basic marketing skills that we all need as entrepreneurs. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, that that must keep you um, really on your toes when you when you're actually working, you know? Yeah, it's fun. I love it. I And I love to be kept on my toes. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to get, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? This has been such a really good conversation. And um, I want you to be able to share with with everyone that's watch, watching how they can get in touch with you if they're interested in working with you or they want to learn more about you yes. because I think you have a really important job you know it's it's good to have a business and it doesn't matter what kind but there's always things that we need to learn and especially marketing nowadays things have changed it wasn't like way back when when i had my business you know we put ads in the newspaper and things like that. We didn't have social media and the internet wasn't around 25 years ago. So yeah. there's so much that, you know, a lot of people don't know and I, we need help and I want them to find you and, and get help. So where would you like them to find you? So my website is my first and last name. So it's andreapalton.com. And then I'm on Facebook and on Instagram at Andrea Paulton coach. And um, I have a freebie for your people. Can I give them that? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I'll put all of this in the show notes too. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think you guys might really like this, especially those of you guys that are maybe trying to get motivation or trying to figure out like what to do. Um, I just interviewed um, six figure entrepreneurs, also one seven figure entrepreneurs. Um, I don't know. You probably know her, Jasmine Starr. She's pretty famous. Mm -hmm. um, and I interviewed them and asked them, what's your number one business growth tip? And they all gave me their answer. So I put it all together and collected it for you. So it's a, it's a cool article. And you can get that at andreapalton.com forward slash hacks, hacks, business growth hacks. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a really wonderful um, article. Yeah, it's, it was fun to do and it's fun to read. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how when we can talk to people who have done a lot of interesting things and they've, they've had some financial success and business success. It's really neat to, to think about, you know, wow, what is going on in their minds that got them there? So. Yeah. And it's very funny because, uh, you know, a lot of people are um, 
and when I ask them, like, what's your number one business hack, like your marketing hack, a lot mm -hmm. of them end up talking about mindset and other things that are really not a business hack. So it was really cool to see the answers, how they varied quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like fun. Well, you must have had a good time interviewing them too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of really cool people. Yeah. Well, I think you're a cool people. I think you're oh. a, cool, a cool person. <laughs> I, think, I think you're a cool person too. I love your vibe. It's just very, it's reassuring and it's very mellow and it's, I, I, I like it. It makes me feel calm, which oh, is a good thing. <laughs> I better tell my family that. <laughs> <laughs> you have it recorded so you can play it back yeah, to them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I love your energy. You have really good positive energy. And so I really want everyone watching to go and find you. And is there any last words that you'd like to leave? Anything you think or yeah. how do you feel? I want to leave with what what you actually touched upon is if you if you go after your passion and you go after what you want to do, you end up becoming a better business leader and a better entrepreneur. So follow your heart, go after what you want to do, not what other people tell you to do or think that, they, that you should do. It's all in here. It's already there. You already know deep down. Yeah. If you go after that, you end up becoming a better leader and, and you serve others better. Oh, absolutely. I agree with that. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yes. All right, Ms. Andrea, you have a great day. And um, I hope to meet you in person one day. You need to come to Honolulu. Yeah. <laughs> after I, this, I, I, I might be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. After we can travel, you know, hopefully we can meet. But I wish you all the best in your business and, you know, all, all the financial prosperity as well. So you take care and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Aloha. Thank you so much. Mahalo. <laughs>